Yeah, what a great way to open our English worship with songs of praise and declaration. Yeah, I, amen. Um, I'd uh, like to welcome uh, Pastor Don. Uh, many of you, you may have known him throughout the years. He's spoken here many times, and I really appreciate him to continue to support us, having to kind of like come up from West Springfield after his uh, service down there. Um, and so let's welcome Pastor Don. He's going to speak to us. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Let's welcome Pastor Don. Thank you for those words, Noel. You're very kind, and God bless you all today. Um, I'm going to take this off. Huh? Um, could we pray, please? Gracious God, I ask you to bless me as I speak. Um, I pray, Lord God, that you will be honored and glorified, and uh, I, I ask you, Lord, to be with me and to guide me. And uh, I pray, Lord, for the people who are here, that they may hear and understand, and that they may hear you, not me. And so bless these wonderful people, Lord. We pray in Jesus' precious name that everyone said, amen. Uh, the scripture lessons, there's three of them. I'm going to read them and make just a very brief commentary about this. Uh, the first is from the Old Testament in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. I want to repeat it again. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 is the New Testament lesson. And this is... Uh, A very, very poignant and beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, scripture lesson. Paul is making the case of what it's like to be in Christ. What shall we say then? Are we, can, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? In it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism unto death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. And there's something I want you to get from that scripture, is that the newness of life is after you've been reborn, after your old self has died and a new self, and this is what we find in baptism, old self died, new self is born, reborn, and now you live and you walk in a newness of life, which, is, which really is kind of a resurrected life, okay, a resurrected life. Uh, Jesus said, um, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. So Jesus is the life giver. We are to walk then. Jesus is the life giver who imparts to us a way of walking in the newness of the resurrection life. Okay. So the, and the third lesson is a well-known lesson, and it's John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verses uh, 1 through 8. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. For the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born 
of the Spirit. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word, uh, taking from uh, Proverbs, uh, the book of Romans, and the gospel lesson of John. God bless you today, and it's good to see you, and it's good to be here again. I enjoy coming here. Uh, today's uh, sermon is about walking. It's not physical walking, although I need physical walking, and I do do some walking, believe it or not, at the Holyoke Mall. Uh, I've got three laps under my belt, if you know what I mean, and that's good for me. Um, it, it, uh, it, it, and so, uh, But it's not really about physical walking and getting into shape. Uh, I'm going to talk to you, though, today about biblical walking, and, the spirit, and, and this is addresses uh, spiritual walking, because walking is a metaphor in the Bible <laughs> of how we live our lives. Walking is how we live our lives, and, and so uh, I'm going to be addressing that, and there's two ways, there's two ways in the Bible that you can walk, and this is very poignant and to the point. You can walk in... <clears throat> The wrong way, or that's called walking in darkness, or you can walk in the right way, which is walking in the light. And that reminds me of when I was a child, we had this song called Walk, Walk, Walk in the Light. You remember that, huh? And I did that here. I'm not going to do it today, but, <laughs> but it, it was, it, it goes something like, let me just go, let me just sing it. Excuse the voice, okay? It's a great thing to praise the Lord. It's a great thing to praise the Lord. It's a great thing to praise the Lord. Walking in the light of the Lord. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Walking in the light of the Lord. And then I do a couple of them. But that's, that's, that's it, okay? So thank you. Thank you, brother. So uh, it, it goes, it's a great thing to lo love the Lord. It's a great thing to praise the Lord. And, and then all three. But the point is walk, walk, walk in the light is what Christians are supposed to do. We're not supposed to walk in darkness. But first, I want to address these things so that you will be acutely aware of what the Bible ha says about walking in darkness. Um, darkness can be very dangerous. Yesterday, I bumped into something walking into the darkness in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning. I got up. I didn't have my phone. I didn't know where my phone is and that flashlight thing that goes on, you know, and that um, uh, I, I walked right into a right into some a big heavy wooden thing. And man, I put out a Yelp. I woke my wife up and then I couldn't get back to sleep because I hurt my toe. It was a nightmare on Elm Street part one, two and three. But it, 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 walking in the darkness is a dangerous thing. So what I'm about to say to you is very heavy and it's very biblical. So you have to listen carefully. Walking in darkness is walking after the flesh. It is walking, pleasing passions, pleasing evil desires. The Bible is completely against this kind of thing. And, 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 it also says, and Paul also says that it is walking to eat, drink, make merry, for tomorrow we die. There's no sense of eternal life. Let's just get all the gusto we can out of life, you know, and, and then it's over. You die. Very dangerous. Walking in darkness. Walking in darkness is also walking in the ignorance of God. You don't know who God is. You have no concept of who God is, and you don't care to find out. I highly recommend, if, you're, if you take a mental note of this, a book by J.I. Packer called Knowing God, a very powerful book, a very wonderful book. But also, walking in the darkness is walking with a love for the world. You look around you, and you see you, you have a worldly feeling. You're looking around and seeing people with this and seeing people with that. Say, I want to be like that. I want to, I want to join the world and participate in the world. But you got to understand, and I'm, I'm preaching biblically here. Worldly, worldliness is not, can, is not, worldliness is not a good thing in the Bible. It's not a good thing. Matter of fact, we are told not to love world, the world. Very clear. And also walking in darkness is walking by sight, not by faith. 
look, I'm a firm believer in science. I think things need to be proved. I think that's a very important thing. If some of you are going to college or you're majoring in a science, I say, praise God. I hope you become a doctor. I hope you become a, a scientist, I, whatever it is. I'm a real big believer in, you know, walking by uh, sight in, in, in that you have to prove things. But that's not the end of the story. You have to be able to walk. Yes, walk by sight. Yes, but walk by faith as well. That's what the scripture says. You got to go walk. In faith means to trust that God exists, to trust that God has a plan for your life, that trust that God is going to lead you, and trust that God is going to take you home, and a trust that God is sovereign over world history. Not man. God is sovereign over world history. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Walking in darkness is just saying, Let's eat, drink, make merry, for tomorrow we die. And you know what? It's almost like doubting Thomas. Unless I see his hands and the, and the nails in his hands, I, I, I'm just not going to believe. We are asked, if we are to walk in darkness, be careful. For walking in darkness is walking for only for something that's provable. And that can be very dangerous. Uh, the next thing is walking in darkness is walking after evil and being proud of it. In the days of Noah, there were radical evil, radical evil. Walking in the darkness is walking after evil and not even feeling a sense of shame. It is being evil and not even having a sense of shame. It is radical evil because it will, it, it'll execute somebody and not even have a conscience about it. That is walking in darkness. It is holding hands with the devil himself. And this one is a big one for me. And I've done a lot of counseling over 44 years of ministry. And these are the, th these are the traps that young people and elderly people all the way up the line get themselves in, uh, in problems with. Because walking in darkness is being enslaved by the following things rejection issues i have to be i have to be liked and i have to be included i cannot stand loneliness and guess what rejection issues are i'm afraid to be rejected and that rejection then gets hidden we say no i'm not afraid of being rejected not at all i'm not afraid when you really are it is being controlled. It will control your way of life. Rejection issues will control what direction you walk in. The next thing, and it's very important, is, is this, inferiorities. When you are in bondage to your own inferiorities, when you look at everybody else and say, boy, they can do things better than me, and that leads to inadequacy, inferiorities leads to inadequacy. When people look around and say, look at them and not me. Look, I must be, something must, something must be wrong with me. Maybe God made junk when he made me. Gets people in trouble. Amen? Ever been there? Anybody? I'm just wondering. You don't have to show your hand, but it, it's a very important thing. It is being, uh, it is, it is being uh, the direction of your life being put in that direction, trying to hide your fears, hide rejection issues, hide the guilt that you may feel about something that you've done 30 years ago or something that you're doing now. It is, it is uh, walking in darkness is walking and letting self-pity control your life, insecurities control your life, and that will determine your direction. These things will push your button and that you'll try to hide them along the way so that no one else sees them, but you know them and they will destroy you. They will destroy you. Fears, guilt, there's godly guilt and there's demonic guilt. Fears, guilt, inferiorities, insecurities, inadequacies, and rejection. Well, instead of making you walk toward God, it'll make you walk away and, and join the world. I know that's a little heavy, but it's true. I've dealt with it enough in my life. I've dealt with it enough in working with people that these issues will push your button and lead you exactly where the devil wants you to lead, to go rather. These things, walking in darkness, 
as walking with the devil, who is the prince of darkness. It is walking not in the light. It is stumbling and falling. So that's the walk in the darkness. Now there's good news, everyone. You ready for this? We're walking in the light. You know, walk, walk, walk in the light. We're walking in the light. So you have to, with, and here's what I, 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 how many of you ever remember the group? I, I know this is foreign to you. I'm going to bring it up anyway. Anybody ever hear of the Supremes? It was a group, okay? They had a song, Stop, in the name of love. I'm not going to get into it. Before you break my heart. Stop, learning to stop. When you, when you are walking in the light, when you, when you believe that, that you want to desire, that you want a passion to walk in the new direction, you want to walk in the newness of life, look, you got to start, if that's God, which it is, the incarnation of God, you got to stop, you got to say, stop, I got to stop. There's got to be a desire to stop. It's no different with addiction. No different with addiction. I used to administer a methadone clinic, a methadone clinic in my first ministry. I wasn't a heroin addict, but I dealt with enough of them, end up with enough of people who are chemically dependent. You have to say, nope, I am not going this way any longer. This way is, a, is the way of death and destruction. And it, now you have to desire and say, I'm going to stop. Now, before I get too judgmental, let me tell you, look at the size of me. I'm a big fellow. I am 278 pounds of not muscle, okay? And I know that I have to come as I get heavier and the temple is the body, the body is the temple of the Lord, amen? I have to say, stop eating donuts. Stop eating Twizzlers. Stop gorging yourself on, on dinner. Stop. Now, the next point, if you want to walk in the light, not only have you have you have to, as you're walking, walking away from God, and, and remember, sin is separation from God in the Bible. Not only do you walk away, you have to stop, but then you have a process called turning. And you know what that's called in the Bible? Repentance. That's when you say, Lord, I can no longer go in this direction. Please, God, help me. I have to turn and I repent of my sin. I'm tired of the old self. There's a saying when you, and I, I've said this in counseling a lot of times over the years, when you get to the end of yourself, that may be the time you find God. When you get to the end of yourself. And so that whole walk now is, is you got to stop. When you come to the end of yourself, you often find God. Remember, there is a way that seems right to man but it leads to death, stop. The second thing you have to do is walk the walk of repentance. You have to come to your, your senses and you have to say, okay, now it's, it's repentance literally means this. I'm tired of going this way and I'm coming here. But right in, the, the diff, right in that space between completely coming around, guess what else there is? You have to be reborn. You have to be reborn. If I were to ask you today, do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you embraced him? Have you received Christ into your heart? Think about that. It's a very important question. Have you repented of your sins? When I baptize people, I say, have you repented of your sins and have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Jesus said, you must be born again. No born again means no heaven. You will not see the kingdom of heaven unless you're reborn. And that means the death of this old self heading away from God. I'm sorry, Lord. I turn and repent. And now I am reborn. Reborn. Nicodemus is all messed up. He says, how can I enter you know, my mother's womb again? He, he completely misses the boat. But Jesus said, you must be born again. Because when you have that old self has died, your new self is resurrected. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I. It is no longer I who walk this way that lives. But now, no longer I live, but Christ who lives in me when you invite Jesus Christ into your life. If you haven't invited Jesus Christ into your life, if you haven't received Christ as your Lord and Savior, I, you're here for a reason today. And that reason is to hear me, this fat guy, excuse me, this heavyweight guy, okay, this heavyweight guy telling you the truth.
And the truth is you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. You can play around. You can know the scriptures back and forth. Listen, the devil knows the scriptures. He quoted them to Jesus. You, it's not just about knowing the Bible. It's not just about knowing things. It's about knowing him as your Lord and Savior. You can know all about things, but you, you have to know Jesus Christ, who is your life, the life giver, giver who will help you to walk in the light. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Amen? Can I get an amen? Thank you. For God gives us a new walk, a new journey, a new journey where he talks about a new creation. Paul talks about the old self is gone, the new has come, and walking in the newness of life. And the Holy Spirit not only recreates us when we're born again, but it will also be implanted in our hearts and give us direction and keep us following. Look, keep Holy Spirit, right here. Baptism. Okay, I received, the, I received baptism. I received Christ as my Lord and Savior. I've been walking away from God too long. Now I turn and repent. I'm born again. Now what do I do? I walk to him. Jesus said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw people to me. He might be drawing you today. Well, I, that's a little diversion right there. But I think it's very important. Because when we walk in the light, my brothers and sisters here, we are no longer walking with the devil. When we walk in, and when we're walking in the light, we are walking not, not in falsehood any longer, but in truth. Soren Kierkegaard, a great theologian who I have a great respect for, Soren Kierkegaard said this, said this, you know, we live in, in a state of sin, we live in a state of untruth, falsehood. Imagine this, two, one plus one equals three. And all this building is built on the carpentry of one plus one equals three. Our homes are built one plus one equals three. Our cars are, are, are wagons now because guess what? <laughs> one plus one equals three. But when the teacher comes, Soren Kierkegaard, when the real teacher, capital T, comes, when capital he teaches us the truth. You know why? Because he says, I am the way. I, I am the truth. I am the way. He is the truth. And when you learn that one plus one really equals two, now your whole life is changed. Sorry, Kierkegaard says, and you can't go back to living the old life of one plus one equals three. There's a lot of truth to that. No longer in falsehood, but you're living in the truth. You're no longer uh, walking in darkness. But when you follow Jesus Christ, you're walking in the light. Walk, walk, walk in that light. Each day, every day, when, we, when you're walking with Jesus, you're no longer walking in ignorance. You know Christ, whom to know is life eternal. When you're walking, with, when you're walking with, uh, in the light, you're no longer walking in unrighteous living. Unrighteous living leads to death. You are now guided by the Holy Spirit to do the right thing. When, you're no, when, you're, when, you wanna, uh, when we walk in the light, we're no longer in bondage to the fact that we have natural eyes and that type of thing, we, have, we see with faith. We understand not just the visual, but we understand spiritual things. We see spiritual truths as we read God's word. When we, uh, excuse me, when we walk in the light, we're, we're no longer walking our own way. And I've said this constantly. One of the greatest sins I see in the, in the 20, First century, where we are right now. I have no idea. 73, I lose all of the kind of uh, sense of where we are. But you, selfishness, everybody, honest, I've never seen so much selfishness in all my life. It's the world, the world has to come to me. I'm selfish. All, we live for the self. We even take selfies. We don't take ussies. We take selfies. We're in love with ourselves. We're, people are like sponges today. All they want to do is suck up, but not give. When you walk into light, you're going to do what Jesus did. Jesus gave his life. You might give your life for other people. You might stop thinking about self and start thinking about others. Amen? 
Amen. Thank you. We're on a new journey. We're no longer are we ignorant of God. When we walk in the light, we have the mind of Christ. Do you know it says in Scripture that you can have the mind of Christ? You can have the mind of Christ. No longer in bondage to stinking thinking, excuse the expression, but you have the mind of Christ. Things you can, you can find things beautiful. You can find things that are pure. You can find, as Paul, Paul lists, many things that we can, that our minds can project. We now have the mind of Christ to do the right thing, to take the right direction, to go where God wants us, to, not where necessarily we want to go, but where God wants. And, I, and God knows, I didn't want to be a pastor. I wanted to be a professional football player. And when I played at NC State, I wanted to play for the New York Giants. But God had a different plan, and I, and I fought God on this. But God is like the hound of heaven. He will continue to call you and bring you forth. The cross will, in the Greek word is hupo, it will draw you to him. When I am lifted up, I will draw people to me. Brothers and sisters, um, there's a, a, a great um, hymn that I love. I don't know if you remember this hymn or whether it's popular. I don't know if everybody knows it. But there's a section of in the garden that goes like this. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other will ever know. My brothers and sisters, I'm here today to give you good news. And the good news is simply this. Walk in the light of walk in the light of God. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Because when you walk with Jesus, it'll be the most joyous, the most happy walk you will ever find in your life. Do it. And if you haven't done it, don't leave this church right here without finding Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that uh, this message has touched somebody here. Um, I pray that I've said the right thing and that uh, I pray that the uh, Holy Spirit, that if I would say anything that isn't uh, according to your word, that you would strike it from the hearing and the memory of, this, of these people. But, oh, Lord, if you're speaking to today, if you're speaking to someone's heart, may they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It may be the perfect time right now because, their Lord, there's a time for everything under the sun. So right now, Lord, I pray for someone's life here to be transformed. Someone will come to know Christ and know him, which means eternal life and the forgiveness of sin and a newness of life. Amen. Let's all rise as, uh, and sing our hymn of response in the garden.
have a few announcements. Um, at first, um, we just want to mention that we continue to have three ways of giving. One is through uh, Bank of America Zelle. Uh, the other is mailing your offering through the church mailing address. And another one's just offering it to the offering box here in front. Uh, this is an up-to-date summary of our offerings and the different uh, funds that we're supporting um, here. Uh, this coming Wednesday, our prayer meeting is led by Brother Evie. And as many of you know, uh, we've started in-person Friday activities. Uh, we have dinner at 6.30. And at 7.30, uh, the adults are here. And this coming Friday, Brother Jonathan, Brothers Jonathan and Baoshan will be speaking about their journey, um, and that's it got me in Chinese. And of course, the youth uh, will continue to have their Bible study. And we've also started up uh, Awana again uh, in person. So let's continue to pray for these ministries um, as we start this journey uh, in the fall. Um, that's it. Uh, let's uh, have Pastor Don uh, come up to give us the benediction. Let's all rise. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you without blemish before the presence of his glory with rejoicing. The only God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before this time forth and forevermore in all God's children said. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, let's uh, pair up and let's, you know, uh, share with each other and pray for each other. Uh, about today's message and um, still early. So yeah, feel free to just uh, congregate and um, pray for each other. And if there's anyone who wants to talk to Pastor Don, uh, feel free to approach him too.
Thank you very much.